How you doing tonight, guys? Uh, tonight we're going to try something different. We're going to try CTScaper Unplugged. So here's to you, folks. Oh, I'm really not a big fan of wine, but it was all we had. Um, last episode in the series, we ran the chainsaw, we cut through some wood, and um, I did some tuning of the carburetor. I'm pretty sure I'm going to edit most of the tuning of the carburetor out because I don't quite know um, everything there is to know about that yet. And uh, it was a lot of back and forth. But we ran some cuts with the saw. And I got to say, my initial impressions of the steel 066 are OMG, oh my goodness. Um, after those first cuts I did on the white oak, which were impressive, I went and cut some, uh, some red maple, and then I had uh, some bigger pieces of red maple, too. And um, that saw with a 25-inch bar, it, it just never bogs down. It never slows down. And it's funny, I, I thought my 036 sharpened well was fast, but this, um, this 066, it's just pretty crazy uh, what it's capable of. So... Um, things can only get better in my book with the 066 because I still have to get it tuned right and there's there's something else I want to talk to you guys about too so um, after I made the initial video I don't know what exactly I was doing but um, I was I was maybe I was tensioning the chain the chain had lost some tension so I was tightening it up and I spun the chain around the bar and I noticed there was one point where you, you spin the chain that it kind of dips, like the whole chain dips. And uh, needless to say, that, um, that freaked me out big time because I was very concerned that all the money I put into the saw was going to be wasted because it had like a bent uh, crankshaft or something like that. So last night I stayed up till past midnight surfing the internet trying to find out what would cause your chain. It's like it's tight for you can pull it for like six inches or so and then it just dips down briefly and I got a video I'm gonna put a video here and show you what that looks like when the chain dips down so tonight I took everything apart and I I looked at the, uh, the not the clutch but the piece that goes over the clutch and then the little sprocket that goes on that piece to see if it was like out around or something and I, I don't see anything you know and, and the little sprocket piece doesn't look that worn so my initial thought was to just throw money at the saw and uh, get new pieces. But I think the first thing I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to take the bar from my, uh, my 046, I have a 20 inch bar, and mount it on this saw. And if, if the chain spins freely without that little bump, I know it's something going on with the bar or, or the chain of that saw. And the way it's a very specific bump, I, I kind of think there might be something with the sprocket tip on the bar. I don't know what. I guess one would have to be short. Um, but hopefully if we, if we change bars, we're going to be doing okay. I took off the bar to uh, go ahead and change it with the 20-inch bar in my other saw. And while I was looking at the rails, I saw a lot of junk in there. And there was a lot of like caked on junk, that's really all I could think of it, inside the bar rails. So I spent a good five, 10 minutes scraping out the bar rails and getting all the junk out of there. And I was really hoping that was gonna be the magic solution to my, uh, to my problem. But I don't think that's it. And if you take a look right now, you see how the chain is down? But if I move the chain a little bit, but there's just no consistency to, uh, to this chain and maybe Maybe it is going to end up being the bar. I don't know what. I mean, I looked at the this, this tip, the sprocket tip. All my teeth are there. They all look the same length. But it's got to be the bar or the, the roller sprocket uh, that's doing that. But, I mean, you'll, you'll tighten the chain. You'll see it like that. You're like, oh, I got it. And then you move it, and no, you don't got it. See how everything is snug right now? If I move the chain, it pops out. Snug, pops out. Snug, pops out. And the chain I've got on now is Oregon Ripping Chain. I think it's 72RD. And I've got a 20-inch bar on. 
but I'm getting the same results with a different chain and a different bar, which means it's got to be something farther back. So, you know, maybe it's something simple like the roller sprocket. It says 0.37582 tooth on it. I mean, maybe it's an off-brand that's not built well. Maybe a genuine steel sprocket will fit the chain better. I don't know. I just don't like that. Um, I'm going to get a new one of these tomorrow. I'll probably get the bearing that goes inside there. And then the uh, clutch drum, which, which is a steel. And I'll probably just bring the saw with me and have the dealer take a look at it. And while we're zoomed in, just take a look at... Uh, Take a look here. I'm going to hold the saw down and rotate it a bit. Does that look like it's, it's spinning crooked? I do not think that the crankshaft... is bent. That just seems pretty hard to believe. So... We're going to hope that it's just something, you know, this seems to be the most logical choice of what, what the problem could be. So all we can do is hope that uh, when I replace this with a genuine steel one, it fits the chain better. Guys, did we, did we accomplish anything tonight? I, I feel like I basically just uh, took a bar and chain off, cleaned the bar, switched the bars, and I pretty much have moved nowhere forward from where I was before. But uh, tomorrow what I'm going to do, so it's a Friday night right now. Uh, tomorrow I'll go to my steel dealer in the morning and uh, I'll bring the saw with me and um, I'll just ask him, I'll ask him for the parts, um, basically everything outside of the clutch there, uh, including the needle bearing, just in case. We'll just order all that stuff. Hopefully they'll have it in stock. And, uh, you know, I will ask the dealer if, if there's a quick and dirty test to tell if, if the crankshaft is bent, but I, if it was bent, I would, I would have to see some kind of play in that, um, in the, the tip of that piece that holds the clutch drum on, and I, I don't see it wiggling around at all. So, um, I just know that it, it would be very nice to resolve this problem. Oh, looks like we're out. So, um, I don't know if this is going to be a two-part video. Probably is going to be a two-part video. We'll, uh, we'll leave you guys in suspense as far as what happened. But maybe I won't post this video until we're, we know we got it fixed. So we don't leave the whole world hanging. But um, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we will see you soon. Have a great night. Bye-bye.